Okay, hello, welcome to this Citizen training video looking at map regression. My name is Chris Kolonko and I'm Team North's Humber Discovery Program Officer. In this video, I'll give you a very brief introduction to map regression and how we as archaeologists use it to identify and record uh, new sites, as well as get a better understanding of how coastal erosion is affecting the areas that, in which we work. So map regression is a tool that's been used by archaeologists and historians for many years now. And it generally uh, kind of focuses on using a series of old maps to compare and contrast how a landscape and how an area has changed over time. In the past, uh, you would generally need uh, a massive stack of maps dating back many years. Uh, and you'd have to have these all for a specific area and then very carefully you know, move around paper maps and compare them to see how an area has changed. So moving into the 21st century, um, this process is a lot more simple now and you don't actually need a physical map to do this. Um, so thanks to the National Library of Scotland, we now have this really quite fantastic online accessible uh, tool, uh, which I call the Map App. And this is available online, free to access, at maps.nls.uk, as you can see in the top left-hand corner here. So when you log onto that website, you'll see a screen, something like this. And this gives you various options um, with which to have a look at and explore old maps. Uh, so the key ones you want to look at are these three options here. Generally, I go to explore georeference maps. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Okie doke. So when the uh, screen loads up, you'll see something like this. And you can see a fair bit of information on the screen here. So you've got various options that you can use to interrogate and have a look at this central mapping layer here in the center. So I'm currently on a computer and what I can do is scroll in and scroll out with the uh, middle mouse button and I can click and drag to have a look around this mapping layer. Uh, and what you'll see uh, up in the top left hand corner here, you can actually select various um, viewing options. So you can quickly switch between the map finder, which allows you to find very specific maps um, for a given area. You can also click on side by side, which is pretty useful for kind of contra contrasting and comparing an area uh, relatively quickly. But I personally like to just stick in the explore georeference map section. So you can use this um, however you want, you know, and I recommend having a play around so that you get comfortable with using this as a as a useful tool. So one of the first places we'll have a look is in the top left hand corner at this little menu here. So this uh, allows you to search for a specific area using a place name, a grid reference. So you can type in, um, you know, in British National Grid, a six figure or a 10 figure grid reference. And really cool, you can search for old place names as well. And then you can also search by county if needs be as well. And if you wanted to, you can show your location on the map. So what I'm gonna do is go to an area that I know pretty well uh, within the Humber Discovery Program area, and that's Bridlington. So let's click on this, and that really quickly zooms us straight into the location that we want to have a closer look at today. Uh, down in the bottom left hand corner, now that we're at Bridlington, we can see uh, several other options which allow us to choose a, a historic map overlay to look at further. So you can select this by category, which you know is um, split up into you know, Scotland, England, and Wales, and the world, and generally I just leave this on Great Britain. Below this, we then have additional options for various mapping layers. So we can switch between topographical maps. We can switch between administration areas. We can also switch between things like farming areas and a whole range of other maps. Generally, the option I use are these two maps here. So the 1913 and 14 maps, which are pretty large scale and really useful for finding individual features. And then to kind of compare and contrast over the course of about 50, 60 years. I use the 1970 map, but you'll find a range of options there, which, uh, you know, you can spend hours taking a closer look at. But for this video, I'm going to switch to my favorite one, which is the 1892 to 1914 map. Uh, other options here as well. So you've got a whole range of things, but my favorite feature is this little slider. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail as I zoom in. 
So, as I mentioned, the 1914 map is pretty large scale, so you can see individual housing plots and a whole range of information, which is really, really useful for us as archaeologists. And coming back to the little slider here, you can change the opacity of this top layer. So you can essentially switch between the two, put it at 50% and see how an area has changed over time quite effectively. So looking at Bridlington, we can see a lot of detail within this map, which is really useful for us to allow us to record features which no longer exist. So screen, uh, scrolling up to the northeast side of uh, Bridlington, you can see how this area has changed extensively since this map was made. And zooming in here, we have features like lime kilns, which obviously no longer survive, but we can record through Citizen. We have additional features as we scroll down, such as the old switchback railway, which we can additionally record. The original beach access points like slipways, the sites of groins, which can be fairly useful to record so that we know what we are finding on site if uh, any, any of these features show up. And a whole range of other things and bits and pieces that we could record and look at in further detail at a later date. And then scrolling between the two, we can clearly see how this area has changed, which includes the loss of uh, the Grand Pavilion, for example. And we'll just quickly switch to side to side again so we can see how that works as well, which is really quite cool. We've got a little benchmark in there as well on the side of the building. So there's an immense amount of detail in these maps and you can spend a very, very long time looking for features to record through Citizen. Uh, things like this landing stage here, which does actually survive today. So if we scroll across there, you can see this feature still survives today. And thanks to the map, we know that it's a landing stage. So yeah, um, this is something you can spend a lot of time looking at, you know, discovering features like the old lifeboat house to record or the old Coast Guard station. And these are all things that are really useful to record for us as archeologists and to record on the map um, so that we have a better idea of what infrastructure was around in the past and to give us an idea of what to look for when we're next out in Bridlington. So I mentioned earlier that we can also use uh, map regression to better understand coastal erosion. So what we'll do is we'll quickly scroll down to Auburn Sands, which is an area that we've worked at fairly extensively in the past. And this area sits on the Holderness coast, which is one of the fastest eroding coastlines in the whole of Europe. And zooming in to Auburn, so you can see site of Auburn village, which is a deserted medieval village, which was um, eventually abandoned in the late 1800s and which today was completely lost due to coastal erosion. So let's have a look here. So we have Old Auburn House, we have the earthwork remains of uh, the back end of the village of Auburn which no longer survives and let's have a look at how this landscape has changed in terms of coastal erosion over the course of over 100 years. So switching the opacity down we can get a better idea of how much of this coastline has been lost over a set amount of time. And we can see here that when this map was made, the original coast edge was probably about, what we're we looking at, about 20 meters or so away from where it currently is today. So this gives us a really good idea of how coastal erosion is affecting a coastal landscape such as Auburn Sands and such as the Holderness Coast. And as we, I'll just switch the opacity down a bit more. As we scroll up and start to look at this landscape today with the opacity meter set to just less than half, uh, 50%, we can see how much coastal loss there has been, which is useful for us as coastal archaeologists to better understand and assess how um, coastal erosion and the loss of the coast edge is going to affect preservation of archaeological sites in the future. And yeah, this is something which is going to become increasingly more important as uh, climate change has a more adverse effect on coastal areas and the archaeology that sits within those areas as well. So hopefully that's given you a very brief introduction to uh, the process of map regression using the NLS's uh, online app. And this is something that you can spend a lot of time having to play around with, but most importantly, it's a 
way that you can get involved with Citizen from home by recording some of the sites that appear on the maps and updating our information where needs be. Thank you for joining me. I've been Chris. See you later.